like, you're like, do you need, need to come back, right? I, it was working fine. Why? And micromanagers are like, I need to literally watch you. You got to understand the environment and see if there's something you can do. Self-reflect yourself. Study shows it. And if you Google whitening resume, a lot of people are concerned about it. There are people that are saying it's slacking off, don't do it. And there are people who are saying, you know what? Why would I go above and beyond, right? It's more like I'm going to go somewhere that I am celebrated. Perfect. Let me just put everything. I'm the one women show here, okay? Because I'm navigating everywhere. So you got to give me some uh, props here. Well, come on. Welcome to my show. Tell us who you are. I have amazing LinkedIn top voice right here. Yay! Give, give, give her a heart emojis, guys. Come on, audio people. She's here for you. <laughs> All right, so Clara, tell us about yourself. And uh, a job search strategist, and I help people navigate the job searching process because I don't think job searching should be this hard. Um, and uh, yes, thank you for the shout out about my LinkedIn top voice. I was named the LinkedIn top voice in 2020, I think. Uh, so that was a thrill. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I love to talk about resumes, uh, really taking control of your own resume and, um, helping using your resume to help you get to the next level of your careers. That is amazing. So, uh, we're going to talk about it today when it comes to changing the career. And I personally felt I, you know, I can speak from my personal experience and Kamara can do that as well. Um, I don't really work with the pivoter um, unless they 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 stay within the transferable skills zone. And I extremely have a hard time actually writing the resume, to be honest, for people who want to completely pivot from one to like completely different area. So mm. that's not my expertise at all. But then I've done the pivoting myself from, you know, the world that I came in a little bit about myself and Kamara, you can add it as well, how you can relate to pivoting, career changing. And I know you've done a mm -hmm. couple. So for me, I was a newcomer in Canada. I worked in the industry, sales industry, retail industry. Then I got a role at banking industry right after graduating. And then I stuck to the contact center, the retail environment into the banking industry, and I climbed up the ladder. So later on, I became a leader. I was a hiring manager. I was leading the deposit team, mortgage team, quality and coaching team. So I was uh, I was in a leadership role for more than 10 years and I got laid off. And honestly, because I had done so many things um, after I got laid off, I had really hard time identifying who I was like there was no clarity. And I didn't even know how am I going to pivot it? Because all over, I'm thinking I'm a fix for this. I'm, I'm, I know I can do pretty much every job out there and audio audience. Can you give me thumbs up if you feel that right now? Like, you know, you can do any anything, anything, give me thumbs up because I was right there and I didn't even know where do I go and then change because I didn't want to go back to the industry. Eventually I went back um, to be comfortable because, Hey, bills had to be paid. Right. I went back and I, I started with the same industry banking world, started leading the team. I didn't like it and I wanted to pivot it. And I wanted to pivot to the nonprofit. And I'm going to add, like, how did I do it a little bit later on? That's why I pivoted. And then nonprofit, I was like, you know what? Um, I think I can do things on my own. And then I started this company, Teach and Do. And these are all based on my experience because I want to stay within the same zone. So that way I can add value from my experience. I still do didn't want to start from the scratch. Now, Kamara, tell us about yourself. If you have pivoted, how did you do it too? Like from what? Oh boy, the other one. <laughs> yeah. So my my entire career has been a bunch of pivots. Um, I started in uh, my background is in financial services and financial planning, if you can believe it. Uh, and uh, so I made it several pivots within that realm: investments, insurance, fintech, and then made the biggest pivot of all to starting my own business. 
Um, and how I did this successfully um, was I uh, acquired the skills I needed to become a resume writer by basically being an apprentice to other successful resume writers. Um, and so, yeah, that's where we are today. And um, yeah, I have lots of thoughts on, on the pivot process, uh, especially when it comes to resume. And um, uh, yeah, so should we dive in? Absolutely. And uh, what's your number one uh, thing as a resume writer you look for when someone tries to come to you and say, I want to pivot, I want to do the career change? What do you what do you do? Well, um, picking up on something you were saying earlier um, about the transferable skills, the first thing I make sure they're clear on is, first of all, what do they want to pivot to? Mm -hmm. uh, that's essential, having that clarity. Uh, you should be able to nail down, like name the job title that you want to pivot to, um, why you want to pivot to it, but also are you qualified to make the pivot? And that's to your point about transferable skills. This is very important. So we can want to make a pivot, um, but if we don't have the qualifications via transferable skills or experience to back it up, then the pivot's not going to be successful. We could certainly go back and acquire those skills and refresh and, and take courses, et cetera, uh, get cross trains. But those qualifications are still going to be essential in a career pivot. That is amazing, right? And I think this is where I got stuck. So when I wanted to pivot from the uh, management role, the leadership, and I no longer wanted to lead the team, um, I had done that and I felt like, you know what, I think I want to be individual contributor. Tell me an audio audience, if you feel that right now, like, you know what, you've had it with the leadership, you you feel like you want to go back to the in individual contributor. Sometimes it's kind of like pivoting as well, right? And then sometimes it might not be depending on the industry. So I did not know what are the skills that I can bring in from my previous role, which is obviously I was coaching my people. I was promoting. I was prepping them for an interview. I was uh, reviewing their resume for internal promotions. I was the one who's responsible for doing career development plan for like quarterly, monthly. You know, I was doing all sorts of things and I completely missed that. And then when I saw there was an opportunity um, in the employment service center and nonprofit that there was a career counselor, a career consultant, employment consultant. I was like, okay, let me see. And this is what I did. First of all, I put the SWOT analysis for myself, which is, okay, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are the opportunities and what are the threats? And the opportunities and threat was um, something that it was beyond my control. And that's what it should be on SWOT analysis, right? And I realized that my strength was something, but the strength they wanted was something else, which is I do not have a degree in social uh, degree agree at all. And a lot of these career uh, coaching industries and then in a nonprofit counseling, they normally do the counseling instead of coaching. They wanted someone to have a social degree or some kind of like license or something, which I didn't have it. So I started to navigate around and build my experience in let's say the resume around hiring manager, right? Hiring manager turn into the career coaching, career consulting with these many years of coaching and recruiting and stuff like that. So see, I never thought that it was even transferable skills unless I, I started like looking at the job description. So now come out, what are your thoughts on it? Like, do you feel like there are some transferable skills um, from going from one industry to the other or the roles? What are your thoughts on that? So, um, I'm a firm believer that all skills by the very nature of being a skill are transferable. So a skill doesn't exist only for one job. It can be transferred to another job, but you need to know what job that is. So all of your skills are not going to be transferable necessarily to the target job that you've identified for yourself that you want to pivot to. But um, it's really as, doing what you did, Sweta, to go through the job posting itself and really like pluck out the skills that jump out to you that you already have. That's where we can really find that that um, kind of crossover where your skills that you already have become transferable to your career pivot target job. That's great. So now in, in the event that someone comes in um, as a resume writer, someone wants to completely flip it over from um, something else to something else, which is not a linear um, career path. What, what are your um, go to tools or something that you always go back and fall back on? So such as resume writing, how do you start from it? Sure. So first, I, I need them to tell me what what they're going after. And um, I need to see some sample job postings so I can make sure that they're qualified. 
Um, it may take us some work to illustrate how they're qualified, but I need to make sure that they actually have the qualifications. And then my writing can come in and help the reader understand how those qualifications match up. So that that's like number one, how, how we have to start. Um, number two, I, I want them to tell me why we're making this change. Like more work-life balance is like can be a personal driver but we need to really shift that into making that something that making it a reason that's attractive to the future employer so what basically i'm trying to get to the heart of what's your unique value that you can bring from your previous career into your new future career that you're pivoting into like why are we making this change uh, what and like what business uh, need can you solve in a way that is better or different than someone else like that the why is so important and I think a lot of people forget to get in touch with that before they try to make a pivot and um, they give me answers like well you know I heard I heard it pays well or um, I heard it yeah I heard you get like uh, unlimited uh, unlimited uh, time off at this particular company so I want to move into that that a uh, job there so um, those those aren't good enough when you're making a big career pivot you need to get really in touch with and nail the That is amazing. So I'm going to share something one moment here. Now, for those of you who are on audio live right now, um, you can go and see on my YouTube channel as well. I'm going to showcase what Kamara put it through the sample of the resume, you can go and see it. Um, let me just double check it. And then you can also go onto my uh, profile as well. And then see that as well. Um, it's on my feature sections on my profile. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to remove that a little bit later on, right after this live. You can go and check it out on the YouTube channel as well. So on my profile, this is my profile on YouTube uh, for people who are watching me, LinkedIn.com. And then you can go on to my profile or you can go on YouTube um, later on and see on a replay as well, the sample that Kamara was gracious enough to put it through. Let me just double check it if it's allowing me. All right, this is this is it. So, Kamara, do you want to talk about this um, at all? I don't know. You can't yeah. probably see it, but like, let's go with a resume, a career change kind of resume. Yeah, I'll I'll speak I'll speak to kind of what it looks like for folks who are just listening on audio. So, what we're looking at here is a sample of uh, the first page of a, a a pretend career change resume. Um, it's pretend, but I'm using in the sample real strategies that I've used for my career pivot clients. Uh, and so with our career pivot resume, we need to make the most of our first page of our resume. I'm not saying your resume needs to be one page. Uh, I'm just saying the first page is where we need to really help the reader understand what we're pivoting uh, into, why, um, and what we bring to the table. So um, the first section at the top, we've got the kind of career summary or the professional profile paragraph. And this is where we want to take the opportunity to tell the reader what we're coming from in terms of a career and what we're going to. But we don't just stop there. We want to talk about basically what main business need we're looking forward to solving and what of our transferable skills, our, our most important transferable skills, we're looking forward to leveraging to solve that business need. Um, and that can be captured in and should be captured in one sentence if possible. Um, it can take a little uh, a little reworking, a little wordsmithing, but uh, it's it's doable. And Sweta, if I could, can I plug my video that's going to go live at 12 Eastern? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> That that walks through this this um, this process as well, and 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 gives more examples as well. So you have a twelve o'clock uh, video coming up on your YouTube yes. channel. Yes, yes. So after so after we wrap up here at twelve o'clock, um, we'll have a 
uh, video that does a, an even deeper dive into this uh, handout that we're looking Perfect. at. Perfect. If you want to see uh, Kamara's YouTube um, handle, it's on my YouTube channel. You can scroll down and she's tagged in there. Feel free to go ahead and subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. Um, you can go and see live and watch the replay as well. Now, I really like the fact that you put it on the top. You said former sales leader now turning to our program manager. And that's exactly what I did as well for myself, depending on the type of role I was applying for. So for the nonprofit, I wanted to go in employment services. I said former hiring manager turn into the, you know, um, the certified career strategist. So let's say if I were to go back into the um, into the similar field, but not want to be leader, I would probably do the same thing too, right? Former hiring mm -hmm. manager from the Fortune 500 companies, award-winning companies, um, now turning to the you know certified career strategist and certified resume strategist, right? And then um, literally my clientele are someone I work closely with the immigrants in Canada, newcomers in Canada who are having that issues with the Canadian experience barrier, also the people who are laid off and uh, they're not able to bounce back, and the people who want to go where they're celebrated. So these are my tales. So I'm partnering, let's say, with the employment agency, or um, let's say if I want to go back to the colleges, university, and do something, I would still go and then like Kamara said was I would still go and then identify their pain because I might not be right fit for every employment center right there right so that's why this is where you got to be clear on it even if you want to pivot it do they want the skills that you have and you can pivot it right some kind of things that you really have to look in through it when he when you talk about resume writing because um, let's be very real and I would love to hear your thought Kamara on it when you see the influence or typing it, give people a chance, hire people with a zero experience, right? What are your thoughts on it? Because that's a good feeling to have, but that gives what? Like self-doubt to the job seeker and then pointing fingers towards somebody else, right? What are your thoughts on things like that? Would you give chances as a hiring manager to the people who have zero experience? Uh, as a hiring manager? As no. a hiring manager, <laughs> let's say, or employer, if you were to hire someone right now, let's say if you were to hire someone in resume writing business, you're right, you're booked out, right? Would you give chance? Uh, with In my situation, if, if there's transferable skills, as in like you were a writer for, in, an, in another role, um, different type of writing, maybe you didn't write resumes, but you wrote a uh, copy for websites, then then we can talk. But if you have no background in writing, then then I'm sorry, I, I can't. That means I have to teach you how to write. I have to teach you how to write resumes specifically. Um, that it's just going to be a lot of sunk costs on my side. And I think that's what um, we we need to keep in mind when we're job searching is that uh, basically the hiring manager or the company is paying for your service. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you're, they they need to know that they're going to receive what you promised you're going to deliver, right? And so it's not about, there is no giving a chance. Like, let's say, for example, I want to hire a plumber. Um, like, I'm, I'm not going to give just anybody a chance just because they're like, oh, give me a chance. You know, I have a really good attitude you know, and I like pipes. Mm. Like what, what is like, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, I, I need to know that you're competent and you're going to, when I pay you thousands of dollars that you're going to um, be able to fix whatever issue that I have. When I pay you yeah, like that's so great, right? And that's exactly my point. I didn't want to talk about plumbing because I talk about the plumbers and roofers. Tell them like I'm trying to pivot from, you know, one industry to the other one. I want to be now a plumber. Um, you know, um, can you give me a job? You can't do that, right? So you've got to make sure you identify the needs. Um, there's a difference between obviously pivoting from um, non-regulated industry to the regulated industry. And that's something that you mm -hmm. have to think about it too. So let's see on a resume, let's go back to the resume that you have here. And I like sure. the way that you put the skills and that's exactly what I would recommend people as well. Um, look into my YouTube channel, also go on to the LinkedIn feature item and then you can download that as well if you want to. And I'm gonna remove that right after the session. Please go ahead and download on my LinkedIn profile, it's in there. And then also watch, um, 
Kamara's YouTube coming up at 12. The LinkedIn, um, her handle is on my YouTube channel at the bottom when you scroll down as well. So the skill is really important and that's eye catching, right? Like for me, if I were to pivot from this to, let's say I wanna go back to the nonprofit world or um, work in the university or colleges or something like that, my skills, would be not something that probably um, it's from 10 years ago. I would add something like coaching. I would add social media handling. I would add public speaking. And it all depends if they require me to do that, right? That's really okay. important. And those are part of the keyword. What are you thinking when it comes to pivoting, uh, Kamara? Like the skills in there, what should be your strategy to add the bullet in the skills area? Sure. So um, in the sample we're looking at, so there's two areas where um, I'm recommending that you highlight transferable skills. So there's a career highlight section, which is kind of a pro resume strategy that I use. Um, and uh, it's basically like writing quick bullets about the top, 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 best, best, best transferable skills that you have that the future that your future employer wants from you out of your target job um and so basically what we're doing is we're we're just teeing these up right at the top of the resume essentially uh how you've already demonstrated transferable skills through your work experience um outside of work experience education this would be a great place to mention if you've upskilled or reskilled um or taken a new certification or training that will help you be qualified towards your new target job. Um, this is where you can mention how you have a track record of doing something successfully that's highly desirable in your um, career change target job. So that's where that's where I'm going with the career highlights. And then the skills, uh, those are basically like the quick hit um, mentioning of your transferable skills, the key core transferable skills that the future employer wants. So this is where that job posting comes in and where you're going to go over with a fine tooth comb, note down any skills that jump out to you and then uh, contrast that against your own skill set and where the where the skill is desired and required and where you already have that skill under your belt, then this then that skill is worth a mention in your skills section. That's great. Um, yeah. So shall we yeah. move on to the pro professional experience? Now, before I actually sure. move down there, I just wanted to let you know, I have a resume writing course today for free at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's on my feature item. You can go ahead and register it. And then you can, it's available for replay as well. If you register it, um, it would be sitting in your inbox a little bit later on. Um, I'm opening that enrollment until a couple of hours. Go ahead and uh, register that right now. And I don't do this most often. And I'm going to cover some some part of uh, pivoting and some part of like you know how do you how do you communicate the gap on a resume and stuff like that too. And if you're a student as well, if you have internship experience as well, I'm going to show some sample as well. Just feel free to come by at 7 p.m. And registration link is on my LinkedIn, also on a YouTube as well at the bottom when you look at it there's a registration as well limited seats uh, are available and do you want to move on to the resume sections of uh, the professional experience um i love yeah. the fact that you put it that on a under sales manager recruited as a result of strong and consistent growth and performance and i love why did you put that blurb in there <laughs> um so i i enjoy when when i can showcase why my clients have been selected as the person for a job. I love I love to highlight it, um, especially if there's a very important reason uh, and, and a reason that that would be attractive to future employers. So in this case, um, this is Michael Scott. I'm an office fanatic uh, anyway. So uh, <laughs> <You are. laughs> he he has a track record of um, outperforming even in bad market conditions if you watch the show um and uh so I, I just wanted to highlight that here um where he's headed uh expansion and growth is is very important while it might not be sales relate like directly sales related where he's headed for his career pivot which is an arts program manager in this case um it's it's still transferable because the the re the organization is looking to expand and so that's that's uh, a business need that he can solve with his background. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. So for um, now, when you go into the experience sections in the bullet, what, what are the rule of thumb that you as a resume writer put it through for people who are pivoting or doing the career change? Is there any framework you put it together? Yes. Yes. So I'm so glad you asked um, because we've talked about this one a few times. So uh, the framework uh, in terms of building a bullet, the framework that I recommend is um, using the rack framework. So you start with the result, you follow it up with the action. So basically how you achieve that result. And then you end it with any additional context you can provide the reader that will help them understand the result you created and why it was so important. Um, but then there's another framework that I recommend, particularly for career changers in order to uh, figure out how to transfer, or I should say how to translate prior work experience, prior accomplishments, so that they make sense for future directions, uh, particularly, particularly career change directions. So um, that is the five R's framework, and that is to uh, reframe your accomplishments. So that's what we, so that's the first R, and that's what we really did here with Michael's resume is uh, prior to, we don't show the before, but uh, in the first bullet, he just ha had grew reservation sales. Um, but then we expanded that upon that bullet and reframed it a bit uh, to help the reader understand that it was through program expansion and launching new um, new concepts, which would be attractive to the target uh, employer. So we're reframing um, existing or prior accomplishments so that they're relevant and they relate to the target job uh, so that they reinforce the skills required and desired of you in the new target job uh and also uh so they resonate with the uh with the target employer so basically like uh you're speaking my language here this makes sense for me this makes sense for my business i can see you in this role that's great all right so i'm going to stop sharing the resume and then um, i'm going to go back and share the linkedin and we're going to open do you have anything that you want to add before i invite people for um, the Q and A. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if there's anything. Let me navigate this, um, around, um, <clears throat> All right, so for people on Audio Live, if you have um, any questions, feel free to come and raise your hand and I'm going to bring you one by one. Please stick to the career changes resume tips, resume question for today in the interest of time. And let's see here. And YouTube as well, if you're watching me on YouTube, please put your question there on YouTube and I will go ahead and uh, pick it. So now if you can see it, there is this, um, if you can see it on YouTube, there is this um, PDF I just showed you. You can go ahead and download it. Um, that's Camara's uh, work. You can download it. Um, and then I'm going to remove it right after the session. So this is my course um, that I'm offering today at um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go ahead and register it. And if you, even if you're not able to join in, you will get the replay uh, for a limited time. Um, just go ahead and sign up right now. I'm going to close the registration soon. And let's see here. Five people asking to speak. Oh, sorry. I clicked on your profile. All right. Suresh, what question do you have? Unmute your mic or give permission to Mike. LinkedIn Audio Live needs the uh, permission. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to keep on bringing if there's a glitch. Moving. Uh-oh. It's, it's just literally uh, going up and down. <laughs> okay. Venki, <clears throat> what question do you have? Guys, just uh, be short and sweet, one, less than one minute, because I do want a lot of people to come in and ask questions to Kamara. Thank you. I don't know if you're having issues yeah. with the mic. Yeah. Okay, you're audible. Having... Go ahead. What question do you have? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, the forum, like uh, basically there will be a um, question, right? Whether we can make the resume for two pages or three pages, but based on the experiences, you know, it want to happen three pages as well. Will there be any challenges like, you know, uh, if we create the resume for uh, more than three pages or two pages? I have my own thought. Kamara, you go first. 
Um, I think it depends. I'm looking at your title, or your headline right now, Venki. Um, I think based on your career level, you sh you should probably fit on two pages. If you go on to three, it's not it's not going to it's not a make or break. But I think you you can prioritize the content you share to fit on two pages. Uh, three pages, I normally see more so for at the executive level, but. There's no hard and set rule on number of pages. You need to use the number of pages you need to tell your story the right way. So that's my my thought. Yeah, I'm like totally aligned on it. And I think there's no rule of thumb. Um, but like, you know, again, as much as you need it. Sometime, have you seen the job descriptions? I was writing, I was working with one of the <laughs> university, you know, and I was real, oh my God, the job description was eight pages. I was like, okay, well, we oh. can't squeeze this to two pages because it's too much to handle, right? And so that's why you got to look at the job descriptions. The answer is on a job description and then avoid all the, irrelevant role from the past unless it adds value and some job descriptions they want like 15 years of experience and if you moved so much you would probably have so much but then if you stayed in the role for 10 years and then five years back how did you like move from that you know uh, 15 years to 10 years you got to put the story together in the resume as well right there are way to do it so as Kamara said for me like you know if you're a recent grad obviously if you do not have internship anything like that it should be one like in you know, a one page that's a rule of thumb but then if you had a lot of project internships short kind of internship project here and there freelance or you might have so many things you might go to two pages too for some executive um like it executive i've seen like more than three pages because they want to they want to make sure that they see all the technical skills and you literally have to put everything in there and it's an employer demand demand and recruiter demand and then whenever i'm teaching resume writing course to the people I go like, hey, stick to this. But if there's a recruiter out there who's going to say to you, I need more than this. I need each and every detail because that's what the employer wants. They're representing the employer. Go and listen to them. Don't argue because they are your clients. What are your thoughts on it, Kamara? Yeah, yeah no, I, I I think that's exactly exactly it. They're, they're, the reader is your client. When you, when you think of your resume as like a product, the reader is your client. Yeah. And so <laughs> you need to serve up what they're looking for and um yeah I, I i don't want folks to stress out about number of pages i think i think that's kind of a, a minor issue in the grand scheme of resume <clears throat> writing yeah uh, i just really want pe people to make sure that they're focused on writing their resumes to show that they're qualified for their target jobs that's amazing right and you would know and then the answer i was i always go back is the job descriptions and um Again, mm -hmm. you, imagine you've moved so many roles, like every two years. And how, like, you can't just, you have to put the relevant role in there too, right? There's a way to it. That's why you have a people like Kamara who can work with you together um, when you are having that issue. It's like, do I write two pages, three pages? And that's where she would um, help you out, uh, stand mm -hmm. out as well. So Amanda, what's your question? Hi, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, hi, hi everybody. Um, you know, I um, can you hear her? Because I can't. Not. Okay, Amanda, you you cutting out a bit. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Ahead. My previous LinkedIn profile was blocked. I lost all my endorsements, all my experience, and everything. That's not my problem. I'm having to rebuild it right now. I just want to find out from you because I'm new to this because I've been working for many years, and this is all new to me. Um, I don't see where the link for the PDF is. And I've noticed that I'm, I've applied for over 100 jobs and I'm not I'm not getting any response. So I know my CV must be the problem. So I need just to know where the PDF is for me to just download it and, and have a look and try and retype it, please. Um, sorry, what uh, I wouldn't recommend using the, the PDF to retype it. You can certainly use it for the structure, but I have a lot of videos on building your resume from scratch. Um, okay. Can you tell me what your target job is? Well, I'm looking to work remote. Um, I've been able to do anything and everything. I own my own business, virtual assistant, admin, manager, is, um, you name it. I've done it all. I've been in the travel industry, banking. So it's, it's quite a wide variety, but I want to deal with clients, customer services, and, you know, um, um, deal with clients, basically. I'm, I'm targeting a remote job. Um, okay. That is basically what I'm looking at doing. Okay, so 
you're getting there with, with the, towards the target, you're getting there with the customer service or client services uh, focus, but you're moving away from your target job when you say you're looking for remote and when that's what you lead with, because ro remote is not a target job. It is a work modality. It is how you work. Um, it's basically like saying my target job is work in the office. So um, we need we need to make sure we're crystal clear on our target job. It sounds like you're on your way, but you need to get even clearer. Um, Sweta, what what are your thoughts? No, I'm absolutely aligned. So, so when somebody tells me that you know I can do all, because that that was me. It's not your problem. It was my problem as well. When you've done it so much already, we feel like I'm a good fit for this. This I can do anything. But um, some of the jobs out there, they want you to be multitask or jack of all, right? Some of the jobs out there, they want you to be master at it, known expert on it, right? So I would definitely echo Kamara's um, point of view, which is you got to target one that you're really good at it. And that's who you are. You got to build a brand. Someone's going to ask you like, Amanda, who are you? I'm looking at your title sales associate. So you should be probably like, you know, um, targeting those things. If you're putting that on a headline, right? Sales associate, but then sales, like there are sales industry in retail industry, wholesale industry, B2B, like what are you doing? Right? So you got to be very uh, careful on defining the industry as well, based on your past. So if you're pivoting, obviously, you got to really transfer your sales to what, right? So what comes with the sales? So I think your job target is too broad right now for us to even say there's a problem. I think that's why the problem is happening, which you're not getting Agreed. into you. Okay, man. So I need to narrow it down. Absolutely. Niche it down. That's what he says. You know, riches are in niches, right? Imagine you're going to the doctor. Doctor is a general person to take care of you. And then something's happening with the heart. Doctor's not going to say, you know what, I can do the heart too, right? He's going to refer you to the specialist and you want to be specialist, not the generalist. You see, because I was in, in retail industry and then I was in real estate. I enjoy people, I enjoy offering solutions, coming up with solutions for problems, dealing with clients, um, customer service. That is what I want to do. That is okay. what I want to target. That's good. That's good. Um, you're getting there. But um, so as what I was mentioning, you, it sounds like you're at a point where you need to really narrow down the industry that you're, you're targeting um, or, the, or at least the list of target employers. Uh, because client services is is very broad and a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yes. I really do suspect that um, folks, when they're reading your resume, are getting a little confused. Because being a sales associate previously, being in retail, uh, lends itself very well to customer service. So you have all the transferable skills. Um, it's just pretty, un probably quite unclear uh, to the reader based on, um, I think your focus on remote work specifically, again, that's just a modality of work. It's not a target job. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And you're right. Okay. Like, you know, that's why, so I want you to walk away with two things today is the title, a uh, targeted title and stick with what you had, which is probably, you know, the sales or customer service, even real estate industry, but then customer service within that industry, be clear on industry. Do you want to go from uh, sales to sales within real estate, not selling the house, but customer service, kind of like getting a leads or a reception or some area where you're still part of sales combined, the industry would be the real estate industry, right? Like, and if you already have that background, if you're passionate about it. So if you want to go to banking, if you've done the banking, then stick to the banking, which is a retail banking is contact center and retail as well so niche it down and see and i have i do have a class today i'm going to talk about the uh, resume class as well although i'm not going to talk about like you know um so many different things in one hour but then it might help you with the career clarity because i'm going to walk people through the career clarity as well tonight and the registration is um there teaching uh forward slash registration come and join and then see if that classes would help you as well thanks for coming in amanda i'm going to move you thank you um thank jimmy uh go ahead what's your question um unmute, unmute yourself you're muted okay now i'm unmuted perfect go ahead okay hi um it's great that you brought me in after amanda i'm i'm interesting in pivoting my career but within the same industry i have a, a long sales career in, uh, I work in, in Texas in the oil and gas and chemical industry. Um, 
right now I work for a company that supplies a product during construction. I'd like to move to something within the same industry that is a, a bigger, what I want to say, value prod, uh, product, um, either selling services for an engineering firm, selling, you know, so larger process equipment for uh, technology providers, et cetera. I'm having a lot of trouble moving across products within the same industry because it seems like hiring managers are looking for someone who's been selling the thing they're selling for so long, you know, and just want to take someone who has already stayed within that product range. Do you, do you understand my question? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to move across product ranges. I have so many transferable skills and so much knowledge of the industry, but it seems like I'm running into a situation where they're not considering me as a candidate because I haven't sold what they sell. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you have for someone in my position? Well, I have more questions. <laughs> All right. Um, are you getting any interviews? I have been getting some interviews. Yes. Okay. A that's a good, that's a good sign. Where does, where does it fall off? At what stage in the interview process? Um, well, the, my, my best prospect was one where it was, it was, I guess you'd call it a third interview. Um, mm -hmm. It was a same day, but multiple panel interview. Unfortunately, it was over video. I'd rather do these things in person. Um, sure. wasn't my choice, but, uh, the feedback I got from it through the, uh, the company's recruiter was that they decided to go with a candidate who had more, uh, experience in that, uh, exact field. And I don't okay. know whether that's a blow off answer mm -hmm. or whether, whether they just had a, a embarrassment of riches as far as candidates go. I don't know the answer. And I, I'm so afraid that I'm, that my resume is is uh, or something I'm doing in the interview process is shooting myself in the foot. And how long have you been job searching? Probably six months. I'm content where I am, but I'd rather move to something more significant. Got it. And casually or or working hard at your job search? I'm working hard at my job at the same time, working hard at my job search. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, there are situations where I'll file an application, but um, maybe not do the due diligence I should to follow up because I do have other responsibilities. So I do, res okay. I understand that process too, but I want to be sure that there's maybe there's something I'm doing from a resume perspective or from a process perspective that can be fixed. Um, and last question, the product, the product that you sell currently, um, does it, integrate at all with the product that you're wanting to sell? Well, it's all things that go into, um, you know, building or maintaining like an oil refinery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are just different, so many different aspects of that. It's such a complex, you know, organism that right. um, there's so many different things you could do. It's kind of like um, uh, Sweta's doctor example, you know, mm -hmm. do I want to go from, knee surgery to, uh, you know, brain surgery. Um, mm -hmm. That sounds like a pretty significant leap. Uh, it's overstating it to say, I want to go from selling structural supports to valves. That's mm -hmm. not that mm -hmm. big a leap. And yet mm -hmm. I, I'm getting treated as if that's, oh, you couldn't possibly know what we do. Right. Um, I, I you, you were told this by one recruiter, right? Uh, that's the feedback I got from one recruiter. I got several others. Uh, you know, we've decided to go with other candidates. Okay. I don't, I don't think that, um, I, I think that is valuable feedback, but I don't think that there's anything based on what you've told us. I don't think that there's anything that you did wrong. Um, okay. you made it to the third rounds, which is, I, I presume pretty far. I doubt that they had many rounds after that. If they extended the offer to someone else shortly after that, um, yeah. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. If you share clients with them, um, uh, maybe calling out those clients, name dropping those clients in your resume might help just so they make the connection. But I don't okay. think you're doing anything wrong. I think you're having, I think you're actually having success with your job search. Um, Sweta, what do you think? No, for sure. I, I like the question that you asked because that's what I was leading towards as well. So now, Jimmy, did you have to do the sales presentation? Normally in a business development world, normally my clients have to go through the sales presentations, case study and everything. Did you have to do any of those? Oh, yes. Right. Oh. And role play. You went that far, right? Role play and stuff. Um, 
with the with the hiring manager yeah like you know when you went to the panel did they make you come up with a presentation did you have to go with the market research and stuff like that did they make you did they you give know, you a in that case i did not um mm -hmm. again it was more it it felt more like it, it felt more like three first interviews mm -hmm. even and, though it was with a panel of people who were um definitely doing the hiring. Right. And to me, yeah. like, you know, I, I think you're self aware of it that, you know, there was probably a little bit of leap there and uh, selling product is the same thing, but you could be right as well saying that uh, going from one to the other one, why are they not taking me to me as Kamara's point is they invited you. Um, they invited you based on the sales and business, de business development, because they, th that's the industry you're in sales is sales. Mm -hmm. Business developing is like kind of like similar framework. Product is yeah, something no matter what you do. So much the same. Yeah. So and the product is something that no matter what you do, you still have to go and learn about it anyway. <laughs> right. So I think so I guess it's that's a matter the crux of, of my question is how do I how do I um show in my resume or in my interviewing process that you know product is less important, so to speak, than the skills I bring. You know what I would do differently is I don't know if you tried this and um, probably I would, here's the thing, I've done it personally myself. So I worked in the mm -hmm. banking industry and the product is same, but they have a different varieties of products. So what I did was in order mm -hmm. to get back, I started opening an account with them, going with the onboarding process to understand how do they call center people handle it? How do they do the onboarding? Like what is the difference in everything? I try to understand their process. When I'm sitting down in an interview, writing the resume, I knew where exactly the pain is, where I can solve the problem. Maybe mm -hmm. if you're trying that product, try to see uh, the real you try to feel the product as a client and then put the case study together here's what the problem is i can come in and fix it so i don't know if you want to try that approach thinking that you're one of the client and you know what i can deal with this because i've done this and here's what i would do right probably that approach right. so that way it doesn't look like you're brand new you have no clue about their product i feel like it's sitting down with a product and they're inviting you but then they're kind of like hesitant because the guy doesn't know the product yet this is where you can probably mitigate that risk of i know it i've done this what are your thoughts on it try that yeah i don't i i i think here you're thinking that you're further ahead or further behind than you actually are mm -hmm. okay uh jimmy i think i think you're you're uh, like it, it hurts to get rejected it absolutely does um like if we look at this purely from a business standpoint and back to our like we're that hiring managers are investing money in a service provider so mm -hmm. the person who they the service provider they went with simply gave them more bang for their buck because they were already doing it. Now, to your point about highlighting a product is a product and I can learn a product, uh, I can learn any product. Um, have you highlighted on your resume any instances of where you may have trained people on product, um, where you have um, specific uh, results of working closely with the client to um, integrate your product and the business result that it provided them. Like I'm, I'm talking hard numbers here, um, okay. where you, um, maybe learned a product from nothing to become the subject matter expert on it. Like these are the, these are the types of ways to show that you can become a product expert fast, because I think that's, that's likely the only thing that's getting in your way. But I don't think, I don't think that a lot is in your way. I think it's, it's a perseverance, perseverance thing yeah. and patience thing at this point. Um, okay. I, oh, I think actually, that you're well positioned. Okay. Cause that's a big part of what I do mm -hmm. is educating my clients on the product and starting them from a position of zero knowledge to, to, there you go. You know, and I did that myself. I, I think that's really good to use my own story of how I knew nothing about this. And then within this amount of time taught myself yes. to become the subject matter expert to the point where I can teach it to my clients. Yes. I don't think my yes. resume says that necessarily. Okay. That's no, I think oh, that's that, great. That's Thanks for me. In, in the interest um, of time, I'm going to have to cut to yeah, you sorry. and then yeah. move on. There are like four people. Um, that was, yeah, but good point there. Um, introduce yourself and please ask questions related with the resume. Um, it's not working, so I'm going to move you. Um, in the interest of time, I got to move this. <laughs> Just like, I don't I don't have anything I don't have anything after this um, <laughs> okay introduce yourself and what's your question for today hello my name is Chantal um I did have um a question in regards to um 
how do I like incorporate um, some skills that I've gained um, at an employer? Well, I was kind of working two jobs at the same time, but I can't put those two jobs on my resume with the, you know, with those dates kind of crossing. Um, but I do want to make sure that I incorporate the skills of having um, my QA work as well as the BA and the SHME. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, why can't you include the second job? Well, I, I just, I didn't want to do it because I felt that it would look bad, me working two jobs and then having the exact same, you know, the, the dates overlapping. Was one a contract role? Yes. Okay. I think you're safe if you call out that it was contract. Okay. Was well, um, it part-time, full-time, both full-time? Both full-time. Mm. Yeah. Just one full-time permit, one full-time a contract. How things are going though. This is kind of the trend though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> And, and I, re I respect the hustle. Like I to be able to manage two full-time jobs. Wow. I know. Um, yeah, I I I don't know, Sweden, what you think from a hiring manager point of view, but I, I don't think that you're gonna I don't think there's gonna be any red flags in terms of like oh, she's juggling two jobs, like, um, that's gonna, I don't think that they think it would be a distraction per se, that there's an end to that job, like you're not doing the second job now? No, I, I'm actually in the, um, in the market, I'm looking, and that was going to be another question, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, how to get um, past the ATSs, because, like, it's so difficult to get past the ATS, and I just, like, I need to get more interviews, I know when I get in there, and get my foot in the door, and get past that, that vestibule, you know, that one period, I kill the interviews. It's just getting, you know, past that part and getting in front of somebody's face. ATS. Okay. Oh my God, question. that's a whole different world. <laughs> um, you and Kamara is like totally yeah. so like, okay, yeah. let's not blame ATS. Let's blame us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all. What's so a role it, it, you're targeting? Mm -hmm. What's a title you're targeting? Um, QA and BA. QA and BA. Okay. Okay. How long? So you need you two working? separate resumes. Yeah. <laughs> It's a separate, no ATS is there. Who's going to pull you out for QA and BA? Imagine yeah. the job description has QA and BA. You need to pay, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I think you're unlikely to come across a job that's a blend. I mean, it may, there may be some QA, extraneous QA work as a BA, but um, you will need a different BA um, resume and a different QA resume. Uh, so what's happening is it's not an ATS issue. The ATS is just a filing cabinet. It's a digital filing cabinet. It's nothing more. That's Amy Miller. If you want to look her up, she's great uh, with debunking ATS myths. But anyway, um, the problem is, is the readers are getting confused mm -hmm. by BA plus QA at the same time. Well, point. I actually just put BA on there because it was just straight QA because I'm just like, I'm, I'm frustrated now. So that's why I decided to put my BA skills on there. Um, but this whole time, it's like for the past two months, it's just been the QA skill set. Okay. Yeah. I um, It's still it's still a resume issue. Like uh, mm -hmm. it's the readers are not, it's just not connecting with the readers. Um, are you get you said you get, have gotten a, a couple interviews or? Yeah, I've gotten a couple of interviews um, and one of them um, I had to pass on um, due oh, okay. to yeah some, some situations. Yes. <laughs> okay. <got laughs> Immunizations, okay. stuff like that. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So, okay. So the resume. So I just need to try to get that buckle down then so I can get to those. Yeah. It's, it's just like, I, I, it's working for you to a certain extent, but not getting you the results that you'd like, uh, I'm sure. So you, you've gotten a couple interview in, invitations, so that's a positive, but it, it does probably need some improvement. Um, and then yes, certainly don't add the BA to the QA. Uh, if you wanna pursue the BA path, that's where that this, everything we've been talking about today will really come into play uh, in terms of, of uh, making a stronger career pivot resume. Yeah, so it's complimentary, probably like just the way the Kamara said, you know, you can't be QA and BA and expert on both. So probably BA would complement QA and QA would complement BA. Like, you know, you got to look at the job description and see some aspect of QA you can integrate as a BA. Some if you're applying for BA, then some aspect of QA you can integrate together. Right. So it's it's you're not going to be SME for both. Um, targeted role, clear title, 
And when it comes to ATS, obviously, they're going to look at the title. So um, you got to be very careful on title, right? Um, and when the recruiters are searching inside, if they want QA one day and your resume says BA, then you're going to be overlooked on it. So you got to be very careful on who you are all across the board. If they're looking at the LinkedIn as QA and the resume says BA, then it's inconsistencies too, right? That's a wrong mm -hmm, branding that's mismatch, okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I'm These are really good questions. Yeah. <laughs> These are great. George, you're next. All right. So I think uh, you're not able to. Okay, George, go ahead. Oh. What question do you have? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, my case is similar to the three... Uh, uh, members who just presented their cases. I'm an experienced IT professional. So I started off as a systems analyst, business systems manager, got onto an IT director and IT business partner in a global uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh, when my job ended, uh, I reskilled to data analytics and I was, I've, tra I've trained in machine learning and artificial intelligence, but just finding it very difficult to get a good role. I'm based uh, abroad in Kenya, so I'm keen on uh, remote jobs. I don't mind a full face-to-face -face job, uh, but it's just becoming very difficult to also bring all my experience in. I've done ERPs, I've done CRMs, I've done IT business partnering, some project management. So just trying to rebrand myself to be able to move into data analytics and eventually maybe head the data analytics section so that's where my challenge is. What should I be putting forward? And also having to condense that into two pages is quite a big task. Then you find you keep changing documents and it doesn't quite, just like the case you are saying, so you put it in your LinkedIn or your resume, next time you miss out and next time. Uh, so that's a challenge I'm facing currently now. Hmm. So much going on in IT world and that's what happens with IT. Kamara, do you want to take that on? And I can add <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> so yeah, the tech world is is the wild west. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm trying I'm trying to trying to think through this. So so you want to head towards data analytics? Um, you want a remote job? Um, are you getting any interviews yet or no? I've I've gotten some. I do get interviews in almost different roles as IT director, as IT business partner. That was very close. I got to do about two or three uh, interviews. But then the challenge again with IT, if it's ERPs, you've trained in one area, they want SAP, um, uh, functional and technical uh, uh, subject matter expert in JD Edwards. So you find again, you get thrown off almost, you're almost there, but then it's like you've climbed around tree and they're looking for this. So I've done salesforce.com and then you find maybe, uh, I'm not as expert in that as in another area. So that's a challenge I keep facing. But I do get interviews, get into the level of uh, uh, maybe second, third interview. But then as it happens in a technical field, the higher you go, the less hands-on or less technical you become. So becoming expert in all these fields becomes quite difficult. Oh, I get that. Sounds, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking exactly the same thing. So like for IT clients that, um, and I, you are so right. And where are you based out, George? I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya. Right. So I'm not aware of the market there, but I can speak uh, from Canadian experience in US market, right? Uh, when I'm working with a lot of clients, if they want to move up, lead the team, be on that head or director level or executive. And you're right. You know, you cannot be expert in everything. What you have, you bring in varieties. That's exactly what they want because you would be potentially assigned different team, team of data scientists. You would be managing it, right? Team of business analysts, team, ERP. You would have different portfolio depending, depending on on like you know where the hierarchy is so i think the area is you can still brand yourself as i know these these portfolio this area right because you've done that yeah. and i think it all depends on going back to the targeted role that who are you who are you like you know when you're leading the it team you can't just say i led the it team like who are you a data analytics uh, team that you're an expert on and if you want to be data scientist still 
still yep. have that expertise in there, but then I have like, you know, the cross functional team under my belt as well, right? Like build that portfolio because you do need those portfolio as an executive as well and put it on the resume that adds as a strength, not a weakness, but you still have to have an expert on, okay, I am an expert on these things, but I have handled cross functional team entirely like, you know, portfolio. That would be my take. Uh, Kamara, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I'm sensing without seeing your resume, uh, I may be wrong, but I'm sensing that your resume, you want to move into data analytics and your resume is too deep in it. Um, you need to, uh, really go for the rebrand as you're saying towards data analytics. And what's most important for you is to drive home how you are a business solution enabler. So basically like with data analytics, the whole point is to extract insights that can enable the business to make more money, right? And and so um, you need to showcase how you've done that in the little bit of work you've done in data analytics and the the huge amount of work you did in IT, so that the that the reader can understand how that's transferable. I think that's kind of the the pillar that you need to lean on is is how you create business solutions whether it's in IT or now data analytics. Great point. So um, um, you're next. Hi, Swita. Hi, Kamara. Your voice is really low. Do you want to speak a little bit up? Can you guys hear me now? Uh, we can, but it's really low. Do you want to come closer to the mic, so? OK, yeah, yeah, just a second. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try to literally listen to you like. <laughs> I'm going to turn up my volume. I know. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, guys, I need a help with my resume. Actually, I'm working in paid media, paid media space, like it is a digital marketing. Okay. So, yeah, currently I'm working in an organization where we work for a lead generation clients in paid media. So, I've been working for two years and I'm planning to move to SaaS company or an e-commerce company to do the paid paid media for them. But, but they are not hiring me. I don't know why. Is it is it something lacking in my resume or not what so i need a help with this because i have applied in 25 to 30 companies for that and i have a good experience like two two plus years i have experience and i have experience in a, one of the top agencies in the india but still i'm not getting a response to my application for that so i don't know what to do with that um i have a question are, are you going are you going agency to in-house Oh, yeah, I'm going to work. Are you so you, like I'm looking at your headline right now? Are you do you work for a digital marketing agency right now? Yep. Okay, and you want to work? Am I hearing you right? You want to work in house with a SaaS or e commerce company? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's that's where the challenge comes in is translating the agency to in house. I see this yeah. a lot with my marketing clients. Um, so, um, I, I suspect that they're just not making that connection. So uh, where I've seen success with the agency, the in-house um, factor is to, um, is to really talk about, so let's say it's SaaS. So is to really highlight any of the work that you've done for SaaS clients. So really keeping mm -hmm. that focus on their world as opposed to the diversity of clients that you work with within the agency environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I have tailored my resume in a way that I could show my skills that could help in the SaaS industry. So I have tailored my experience section in which I have added points in which I can show that I have that type of knowledge that could help in SaaS industry or e-commerce industry. And I have also tailored my career objective in a way that it could show that, yeah, this guy has a skills that could be helping SaaS or e-commerce industry. But still, I'm not getting any response that... Uh, uh, that re on that application, I don't know why. Okay, career objective not. is problematic because that when we talk about objective, that automatically makes it about you and not about the business needs that you're solving. So you you need to treat your resume like a marketing document essentially, uh, and it's all about the solutions that you can provide to the uh, company that you're targeting. Um, tailoring I, that means different things to different people. I'm not really sure what that looks like. Um, for you, for your case, but um, I'm sensing that we're, you're not providing hard numbers 
um, and metrics that w that helps the SaaS potential SaaS employer understand the impact of your work. All right, perfect, Kamara. So you're right. Um, it feels like, and he he's he's um, not in Canada. We can speak based on what what's um, what's working here, what's trending, and it feels like back mm -hmm. in India, probably um, you're going from the um, something with a digital marketing agency to SaaS company. It's a different. Um, yes, it's it's a marketing, but at the same time, w when it comes to SaaS, they are really techy. They they really want someone who's already been in that role or whatever it is. So probably that's where the gap is, and I think. Um, something that you want to try would be the entry level and you only have two years and I don't know if you're applying for the role which is more than two years are you targeting the right role right so some time two years could be less for SaaS industry depending on the digital marketing agency as well Edson you're next uh, unmute yourself you're muted um, there is a mute uh, mic button Okay, I'm going to take uh, one last question. Please stick to the resume only, uh, resume questions, and we're going to wrap this up. It's over. Uh, Biju, what question do you have? Okay, so I think we're having issues. Obviously, the audio live, um, unfortunately. You can send a um, question to Kamara or myself. If you have anything, we'll reply through the DM. Now, to wrap this up today, guys, um, I am offering the free resume writing course at 7 o'clock tonight. Um, and um, come in and join in, and the replay would be available as well. It's on my LinkedIn profile. You can go and see it there, uh, right there. You can go and see register, and then you will be getting replay as well for a limited time. You can download the resume thing that uh, Kamara did it for you. You can download I'm going to go ahead and remove it now. Um, and if you want to watch the replay, you can go and watch the replay. And Kamara, you're probably um, on on YouTube already at 12. It's 12.05. You can go ahead and see more to the career change tips on her channel. YouTube channel is on my YouTube channel. You can go and um, watch her directly. If anyone wants to find you, Kamara, what's the best way to get hold of you? Find my video. Um, find you find to me. work with you or hire you as a resume writer. What's the best way to reach out to you? Uh, here on LinkedIn or on YouTube. Um, actually, I was going to say, if you have any questions about making a career pivot, uh, best to include those in a comment on my YouTube channel. Uh, we have really good conversations going on over there. And that helps helps me help other people as well who might have a similar question. Awesome. Thank you so much. do you need, need to come back right I, it was working fine why and micromanagers are like i need to Thanks. literally watch you you got to understand the environment and see if there's something you can do self-reflect yourself study shows it and if you google whitening resume a lot of people are concerned about it there are people that are saying it's slacking off don't do it and there are people who are saying you know what why would I go above and beyond, right? It's more like I'm going to go somewhere that I am celebrated. <laughs>